Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your June 2021 money and career reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps this channel grow and for the readings to be seen by more people, which is absolutely thrilling and wonderful. So thank you so much for doing so. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. Let's take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into the safe and loving space. Let's let the bull sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Aquarius. June 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius. June 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius. June 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius. Angels and Spirit Guides, show me clearly. Aquarius. June 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius. June 2021, Money and Career, Aquarius. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Now the energy up top is the energy that crowns us. The energy below is the energy that grounds us, roots us during this time. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the star card, which is us shining through. We're represented by the star in the major arcana. We're represented by the swords in the minor arcana. Then we have the High Priestess, and we have the Two of Swords. The energy to crown us is the Two of Swords once again, so there's definitely new options opening up to us. And the Six of Wands celebration within work from these new options that open up. But there's also a sense of us turning deeper into what we want, into what we desire, where we want to be, how we're looking at things, how we're growing, how we're developing. There's, there's a lot coming forward during this time. Let's look at the energy we need to be mindful of during this time. What is the energy that Aquarius needs to be mindful of? June 2021, money and career. What is the energy that Aquarius needs to be mindful of? June 2021, money and career. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. The Queen of Swords, we have to be mindful of ourselves. We kind of will have a tendency to get in our own way during this time. The Queen of Swords is, of course, air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is being very kind of sharp at times when it's to be mindful of, it's kind of the more negative qualities. This is being sharp, wanting things to be just to the point, looking at the facts and really boiling things down just to the facts. The, the Queen of Swords during this time, as it pertains to us, is going to be the sense of just wanting to hear like the heart of the matter, just wanting to hear the very essence of things and not wanting the greater story. And that's actually going to be a disservice for us. So we're going to think that, okay, this is going to help me make decisions right away. This is going to help me know exactly the way that I'm going, exactly the way that I want things to be. But it's actually going to take away from a bigger narrative, a bigger story, a bigger, a bigger part of the story that, that we need to know during this time. So don't, don't rob yourself of valuable information is what Spirit is saying. The chakra energy for this time, Aquarius. June 2021, money and career, Aquarius. June 2021, money and career, angels and spirit guides. <laughs> there we go. A 
and it is visualization, the third eye chakra. So with this energy comes a sense of knowing and understanding. With visualization, 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 there we go, gets a little bit of a bad rap because people think, well, it was supposed to solve everything. I was supposed to visualize and then it was just supposed to be. What visualization does is that our mind does not know the difference between make-believe and reality, which is terrifying, but also really cool if you think of it in the sense of, if I believe it, then my mind can think that I've done it. So it's starting to make a pathway before we even, starting, we, we even start to do the thing that we really want to do. It starts to forge a pathway within our mind to say, yeah, I can. I've seen myself doing this before. I know I can succeed or I know I can get it done. Now, what it also can do to us at times is when we're visualiz visualizing, we visualize the end result. We visualize the perfect thing. And then as we're working to get there, because we can't get it perfect right away, we can get really frustrated with ourselves. So we also have to be kind and know that I'm visualizing the place that I inevitably want to stand. It will be different than it has I imagine it because life is always different than what we imagine, but it will still be powerful. It will still be intensely beautiful and it'll be the exact right way that it's supposed to be. At our root, we have ourselves come forward. The essence of ourselves come forward. And this is the time to let our hearts, our souls, what we desire shine. This is the time to look at what we want on the spiritual plane, what we want on the earthly plane, and be able to connect in a very real and honest way. The star leads us to perfection, but it also can be the stress of perfection coming forward. Perfection is, again, something that isn't real. We, we've made it up, I think, to just drive us crazy and to sell more things. So what we're going to strive here is the, is the realization of wishes. Not saying, I have to get this exactly right, but to say, what is it that I most desire, want, need, and long for within my life? And what is it that I can start to, and how is it that I can start to align my life towards those greater wishes, towards those beautiful desires? And what is it that I'm doing right now that's sabotaging me? Because the high priestess takes the veil from behind our eyes, or from in front of our eyes. But no, it's like, it's behind our eyes. It's the way what we see enters into our brains. And so the veil is lifted and we start to have that energy coming in. We start to have that kind of like knowledge coming into our brains more openly and more honestly. And we see things more clearly. It doesn't make it that we see things easier because usually when the veil is lifted from our eyes, we see things in the way that they are, not in the way that we wanted them to be or in the way that people are, not in the way that they wanted themselves to be perceived. And so during this time, when we're seeing things more openly, more honestly, more more divinely, it can also be very upsetting because it's not what we thought it was going to be. We're also going to be very drawn to the spiritual, but in a very quiet, introspective, developing sort of way. We have the pomegranates behind us that link us with Persephone. We have the horns on the top of the head with the sun rising up or the phases of the moon, the cross, the Torah, the, the crescent moon. We have the water behind her and then at her feet, her dress pool, pools into what looks like water. So we have that motif of the water, of the essence of life, of the, you know, of the flowing, changing ability of being in mind coming together. And so this is a time where we look at things. And again, we want, we want to see. We want to see what was once obscured for us. We want to gain an understanding. We want power. We want insight. We want ideas. And that is what's moving us forward. And it brings us to the Two of Swords. It brings us to the fact that there are, there's a crossroads at this time. And what we need to do is we need to look at what we, what we want and also what divinity is giving us. Because whenever the star comes up, the stars are the wishes in the sky. The stars are what we named the gods in ancient times. The stars are what we built the pyramids to and what we guided our ships and our paths by. And the stars represented higher power and higher grace, but also navigation and understanding. So when the stars come forward, the stars do not give us what we cross our fingers wish for. The stars give us what our heart longs for, what our soul greatly desires. And as the knowledge comes in, as we're seeing things more openly and more honestly, we're looking at a different path. We're looking at a path that's right for us, a greater understanding, a greater insight, a greater sense of ideas, and we're going to see ourselves moving forward in a way that 
we didn't think we could. We thought there were two paths, or we always saw one of two ways moving forward, or two ways moving forward, and never felt like we belonged to either one. But my goodness, we had to make it work. And now we're starting to see things opening, opening up for us. We're starting to see paths coming forward that we hadn't imagined before. And we're seeing ourselves move forward towards more, towards a greater understanding, towards a greater complication. Complication, yes, but also comprehension. But it does complicate things because we have the Two of Swords coming up again. It's like, which way do I move? What if I take the chance? And what if everybody laughs? Here's the thing. The Two of Swords speaks very personally to me. Before I started this channel, before I started reading the tarot, for, like, publicly like this, I, I was lost and overwhelmed and everything just seemed to be falling apart. And I didn't have a place that I belonged. I always saw the two ways of being. One was in the corporate world and the other one was either staying at home and raising kids or, you know, being a teacher or something very traditional. And I didn't want either of those worlds. I always thought I would be a stay-at-home home mom, but that wasn't where my life was at that point or even now. And so I looked at those, those paths and I just felt hopeless because none of them were right for me. They weren't where I was. And I remember my mom saying to me, very honestly, you know, just read the tarot. Just go on YouTube and read the tarot and see what happens. You love it. You're, you're good at it. Do it. It was the scariest, most terrifying thing I'd ever done. I am astoundingly introverted, right? And this was beyond the realms of my comfort zone. That's the sort of energy I'm seeing here. Beyond the realms of your comfort zone. But it's something you're good at. It's something you have, have an aptitude for. And you're going to think, well, what if people laugh? You know, what if I tell people I read the tarot and they laugh? So what if they do? This is your life. It's not theirs. Build your success. Build your power. Build your beauty. And let it shine. Because that's the essence of Aquarius. To let your own unique way shine forward. And there's victory from it. In the realms of career, in the realms of passion, in the realms of desire, there is victory. And it moves you forward towards something greater. It's time to learn how to celebrate yourself. It's time to let that celebration shine forward, grow and glow. And it's time to hold the head up high and say, this is me. Holding our heads up high and saying, this is me. This is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I love. And it doesn't have to be the nine to five job. It doesn't have to be the main job that pays all the bills. But it is a calling to your soul, an expression of yourself. And it brings beauty and purpose and glory into your world. It just does. And it's bringing that beauty, that glory into the world of your being and walking forward in it proudly and succinctly and passionately. And that's what this time is leading you towards. When it comes to the realm of money, money's called in. It is. It's going to come in in different ways than we expected, but it is also called in. But there's a new path opening up when it comes to career. And again, it might be a side project that doesn't bring in any money for some time. And as you're building it, as you're building your confidence, as you're building yourself, then things start to change. Then things start to take off. It moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. And that's lovers. It's thinking that I have to be in love with what I do every moment of every day. Sometimes life boils down to doing what we don't want to do when we don't want to do it or when we have to do it and we don't want to be there. Subconsciously, we want everything to be ecstasy, beauty, a climaxing experience. And it isn't. It isn't. Sometimes life is, is disappointing and overwhelming and boring. But it's moving forward. It's saying, where is the love? Where is the beauty? Where is the passion? Where is the power? And how does it move me? How does it guide me? Lovers is also Gemini energy. Then we have the chakra message, which is listening. As an air sign, listening is so important. This is the third chakra. This is listening to yourself. This is listening to the world around you. This is listening to what is desired, what is needed, hopes, dreams. Listening is important. This is a world where everybody talks and nobody listens. 
Now it's time to embrace the skill of listening and let it be the art that it is. And also, <coughs> excuse me, the art that you're good at, air sign. Aquarius, you as an air sign are good at listening, are good at developing, are good at hearing what isn't being said or the undertones of things. Listen. Listen and the world will surprise you. The subconscious rooted message is the Two of Cups, the Minor Arcana Lover's card, healing, beautiful love coming forward, a sense of the two sides of our personalities, the masculine and the feminine coming forward in love, in harmony, coming together in love, in harmony, healing over past wounds, past doubts, past fears, the conscious and the subconscious coming together, being emboldened. This moves us to the subconscious energy that crowns us, and that's the Wheel of Fortune. Our angels are untangling our mess, which is very, very nice of them. And we're going to start to see the change coming in, a new season, a new passion, a new power, a new promise, a new drive forward that absolutely takes us by surprise. Be ready for the change, because the change is ready for you, Aquarius. All right, Aquarius, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we move forward in prosperity and success. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Aquarius.